Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oyix Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Good morning and welcome. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. That's what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. And you know, it's a powerful mixture. The grace of the Lord Jesus, meaning that the ability that you don't have, that the Lord Jesus will supply it, meaning that you're able to do what you cannot do on your own or by your own strength. And then the love of God is coming into the awareness of the fact that God loves you and experiencing the love of God. And then the communion of the Holy Spirit talking about the benefits or the help of the Holy Spirit in the life of a man. You can imagine if these three mixtures come into play in your life today, how today will turn out. Let's pray. Father, thank you. You are such a good God, Lord. And so, Father, I ask today for your people that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, let it rest upon them, Lord. Father, that they experience your love today and the help and partnership of the Holy Spirit. Let it rest upon them today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you study the Bible or you observe what goes on in people's lives, it'll be very obvious to you that there's something in operation in their lives that is not quite right, you know, in certain people's lives, whether they're in the Bible or in everyday life. Now, there's something called a generational cause or generational patterns. When a curse is placed over an individual, but not just the individual, his entire generation to come. And what happens when that is in operation is that things will just be off in the life of that man or woman and in his or her generation. Let's take a few examples from the scripture. If you read from the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, the Bible tells the story of Naaman who was um, a highly placed official in the Syrian army and he had leprosy and he had heard through his maid about Elijah, God's prophet. And so he went to meet Elijah and Elijah asked him to dip in the river Jordan seven times and he'd be cleansed. And indeed he was cleansed. And of course, out of gratitude, he gave Elijah gold and silver and clothing items and all sorts. And Elijah refused to take a single thing from Naaman. And so Gehazi, who was the servant of Elijah, overheard the conversation and of course because of greed he now went behind and went to meet um Naaman and asked Naaman to give him those things that his boss Elijah had rejected he pretended that it was his boss that sent him to get those things he pretended it was Elijah had sent him and so of course Naaman innocently gave him so many things silver clothing items all sorts of things and gave Gehazi when Gehazi came back Elijah confronted him and said I was there in the spirit when you went and collected those things from Naaman and see what the Bible says in verse 27. This is what Elijah told Gehazi. He said, because you have done this, you and your descendants will suffer from the Naaman's leprosy forever. When Gehazi left the room, he was covered with leprosy. His skin was as white as snow. So you see, there's a generational cause upon Gehazi because of what he did. So you see, the children born from Gehazi's loins forever will always have leprosy. In other words, they're going to begin to experience something they didn't know the origin of, something they don't know any single thing about. They're going to experience it because there's a generational cause that has been triggered by their father Gehazi. Let's look again in the book of Matthew chapter 27, verse 24. This is talking about when Jesus came before Pilate and judgment was to be given. Pilate didn't want to crucify Jesus, but the people kept on screaming, crucify him, crucify him. Verse 24, the Bible says, Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. And all the people yelled back, we will take responsibility for his death. We and our children. So what they were doing, this um, Pharisees and all the people that were shouting, had triggered a generational cost, not just on themselves, but their entire generation. So the payment for the blood of Jesus was to rest on their family. It doesn't matter where you look from Genesis to Revelation, you constantly see, you know, generational patterns being in operation. For instance, if you take a look at the life of Abraham, for instance, you would notice that Every woman born in that generation, they all had problems with childbearing. So Abraham married Sarah. Sarah, of course, initially couldn't have a child. And then Abraham had a son called Isaac. Isaac was with Rebecca. Rebecca didn't have a child initially. So after Isaac, you have Jacob and Esau. And you see that Jacob's wife that he married did Leah. She didn't have a child and all of that. So you see that in that family, it was a consistent pattern of childlessness. Before they take in, it's difficult. There's a lot of prayer going on. 
You see some families around you, you know, they struggle so much. Nobody ever rises to be financially wealthy. Nobody ever rises. Or you see people at a certain age, they die off. They don't live long. You know, you just have all kinds of things going on in people's life. There are so many patterns that if you pay attention, you might see in some families certain patterns. In some families, the women don't get married. In some patterns, you see where it's difficult to have a child. The children they have, you see that they went through a lot of prayer to be able to break out of it. And they will probably have just one or maybe two children. You know, the patterns are multiple. It goes on so much in life. But guess what? When a person genuinely gives his heart to the Lord, accepts Jesus as his Lord and Savior, every generational pattern is broken. Now, the question will be, yeah, but I know people who are committed to Jesus and I still see these patterns in their life. Let me tell you what it is. Legally, those patterns do not have the right to function in the life of any believer. Now, the enemy knows when you do not know your rights, when you do not know your privilege, when you do not know what you have inherited from Christ and he takes advantage of your ignorance. The devil thrives a lot on the ignorance of God's people because when there is a pattern in your generation it's not meant to affect you but if you don't know then those things will begin to affect you even though they don't have a right to do so now see what the bible says to us in john chapter 1 verse 12 it says but as many as received him to them gave he the power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name those which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but those born of God. What's the scripture saying here? That even though you have a physical birth, that generational course is running through the physical lineage. But if you recognize that you have now given your heart to the Lord Jesus, you are a child of God, the Bible says you have another lineage. Your generational lineage or where you trace your lineage from is no more from your physical father or your physical mother. You trace it from Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible said that the moment when people receive Jesus into their life, they are now born not of blood, not the will of the flesh. You didn't, you know, come into being and become born again because of the will of the flesh. The Bible says you are now born of God. Let's look at it from NIV version. He says, yet yeah, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. He says, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. So you need to recognize that in the realm of the spirit, you are tracing your generational lineage from another source. You are now born directly of God and therefore you are exempted from any generational pattern or any generational cause in your family. You know, any other person that is not saved can have those things in operation but you have the right to now open your mouth using the name of Jesus and free yourself from whatever is running through your generation. So the only thing you should see in your life are the things you see in the life of Jesus. If you didn't see it in the life of Jesus, it has no right to be in your body. And guess what? Those things you recognize, they don't have a right to be in your life. The only reason they are there is because of ignorance. When you gave your heart to the Lord Jesus, at that moment, you inherited a new generational bloodline. And in that that bloodline is as pure, it is clean. There is nothing like a generational curse on it. Every curse is broken in the name of Jesus. You need to know it. You need to know that it is your privilege as a child of God to have a clean lineage. So the question is this, are you taking advantage of your privilege in Christ to break off from every generational curse or generational pattern or anything that you see in your life and family that you didn't see in the life of of Jesus Christ. Oh, what an awesome privilege it is to be a child of the Most High God. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. For other life-changing messages, you can now download the app Rev Oyik Speaks from Play Store for Android phone users or Apple Store for iOS users. You can also follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Telegram all on the handle Oyeks Alfred. Oh,